All right, welcome in today. Uh, welcome to the Incline Podcast, Incline NFT Podcast. Um, this is just basically a general podcast about NFT news um, and some of our NFT favorite NFT art and artists uh, from the NFT space. Um, this particular episode is going to be all the things you need to know about NFTs. Um, a lot of the terminology you're going to start hearing um, as NFTs become more and more popular. Um, this, my name is Andre, by the way. My name is Kenny. And that's my guy, Kenny. Um, and so, yeah. And why is this important? Um, just because the NFTs are going to be a big part of our future. Um, as these things start to get more popular, you're going to start hearing more and more about them. They're going to be start, or they're going to start being being more incorporated um, into your everyday life, whether we like it or not. Um, so let's get right into it. First thing you need to know is the blockchain. So a quick definition just of the blockchain, then I'll let Kenny kind of um, give you more of the technical application. Um, this is dictionary.com. So the definition of a blockchain is a system um, in which a, re- a record of transactions are made in Bitcoin or any other crypto, um, and they're maintained across several computers that are linked in a peer-to-peer network. So that's the basic definition. Uh, but Kenny, you can go ahead and kind of give a deeper dive into what actually a blockchain is and why it's important. Yeah, my the way I think about it is I think about it as this big receipt. Uh, so each blockchain network is uh, attached to every transaction that ever occurs on that network. So uh, with each further transaction or exchange of value, the network gets more and more secure. So I think of it as if we go to a store and everybody who's using MasterCard, there's one room somewhere in the world that keeps printing off these MasterCard transactions and keeping track of how much money uh, is left in each person's wallet and how much money is being moved around. Mm. And there's many blockchain networks and non-fungible tokens. The most popular is the Bitcoin network, but with non-fungible tokens, it's built off of the Ethereum blockchain network. Right. And there's many others, but those are the two most important right right now. Yeah, and the main thing about blockchain, blockchain is actually nothing brand new. People have been using blockchains kind of on the stock market for years, um, but it's it's one of the most important aspects of NFTs. Um, But that'll take us into our next kind of term that we need to know. The next thing you'll need to know is uh, all about fungibility. Um, So the definition of dictionary.com, definition of fungibility uh, is something that's able to replace or be replaced by another identical item um comma mutual it's mutually interchangeable so fungibility kenny why is why is why is that important so fungibility is really important uh when it comes to currencies in general but a lot of currencies have problems with fungibility like the dollar for example some people won't accept a ripped dollar compared to a crisp dollar so right and in the context, it might not be fungible or it, or it is fungible. Uh, same way with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is seen primarily as uh, fungible because you can usually exchange one for its listed value. But there is things that can take Bitcoin out of circulation and make one Bitcoin more or less valuable than the other. Mm. Um, so non-fungibility means that one token can have a unique or different value than anything else uh, on any equivalent token on the same network. Right. So with that, art, that well, that kind of brings us into the next term. Next term is actually NFT itself, um, a non fungible token. And so the dictionary definition of an NFT is a unit of data stored on the blockchain that certifies um, an asset as unique. And then comma, it's not interchangeable. So non, so fungibility, you can think of as interchangeable. Non-fungibility is something that's not interchangeable. Um, and so that kind of brings us into the world of NFTs. Um, also note that it's a unit of data that's kind of stored. So, I mean, you could say that NFTs are actually physically nothing, but, you know, if you want to think of them as something, it's a unit of data at, you know what I'm saying? As far as unit of data, world. usually in the form of a lot of these things on the blockchain are usually in the form of like an address or I call them to people who don't 
understand the blockchain, like a social security number. It's just a way of tracking, uh, you know, each transaction has a certain number, each wallet has a certain number associated and same way with a non-fungible token. It's gonna have a number to verify that that is, uh, that, that it is what it says it is, right. unique. So yeah, NFTs is all about being unique. Um, it's all about things that you can exchange for value that necessarily weren't created, weren't intended for the purpose of money. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's just it's just kind of when you start to dive deeper into it, it's just like, what do we place value on in our everyday life? Is it art? Is it um, our items? It's, these are just kind of the, the deeper thoughts of what NFTs could be used for. And that's what they're already starting to be used for, especially with art. So the next term um, is Bitcoin, something that you definitely need to know um, as NFTs get more popular. Bitcoin, the dictionary definition is um, just a digital currency in which a record of transactions is maintained. Um, then comma, new units are generated by computing um, sophisticated math equations. Um, and it operates, the next thing is it operates independent of a centralized bank. So several very important things uh, within Bitcoin. What strikes you as the most important thing there to know to know about Bitcoin? Uh, about all of this, the most important thing is that it's decentralized since uh, it, it's a currency that governs itself. Right. So there's no need for any institution to um, to regulate have authority over our moderate. transactions yep yeah exactly. moderate our transactions That's a good word. yeah so getting away yeah so getting away from centralized entities is kind of what nfts all of, are all about um at its core getting away from how the dollar is made by the u.s government um why can't we trade things that are worth value to us um you know what I'm saying, for things that could be worth value in other ways. That's basically all the transaction is. That's basically all the money transaction is, is trading something of value, which is money, but the government gives us money and they give us that value. So NFTs, you can think of it as, you know, kind of creating your own value um, just with an assortment of just different, different things. It, so, exactly. And that's why I, after diving into NFTs, that's why it's so interesting to me because it really does replicate our at least our u.s market from my experience yeah. um because there's a supply with everything that you buy in real life right so if that supply gets dwindled down or as soon as somebody buys something at a certain price then they can list their own value like andre said right so it really uh marries the blockchain with the way we actually do business in the real world yeah. And on top of that, on top of that, it's decentralized. So it's not anyone saying that you can or cannot make this transaction. You can or cannot, you know, spend this money in this way. Um, so just very cool. What's really, really cool is that it's 100 percent transparent. So right. any any non fungible token that I buy, I can see its entire life history. I can see what wallets it went to. I can go into those wallets and see the other things that that person has bought. Uh, and that just goes back into the blockchain. It's a it's an amazing application of blockchain technology. All right, next important word or term you need to know is probably Ethereum. Um, so I'll just give you a quick dif uh, dictionary definition. Um, basically, it's the same thing as Bitcoin. The exact same definition. It has a, a aspect that is a, dig a digital currency. Um, it's stored on the blockchain. Um, it's kind of solved by equations and things like that, but then it adds um, the ability to use smart contracts um, within the NFT or the coin itself. Um, so smart contracts, kind of the next term. Uh, so I'll just give that quick definition. A smart contract is a program, a program or a protocol, which is automated and it executes legally relevant events and actions um, according to the terms of said contract. How is Ethereum even better than, than Bitcoin, Kenny, how would you say? I wouldn't say better. I would say definitely different though yeah. uh, to some people. I mean, Ethereum attracts developers because they have a lot of features like smart contracts and um, portability between applications that uh, 
developers like. Like, there's not uh, too many. Uh, there's web applications for Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is just a pretty simple wallet to wallet. With Ethereum, you can get a lot more creative with uh, the things that you do because you get they give you that control. Yeah. Um, so so essentially, Ethereum, you can add kind of stipulations as to how you want this money to be used, as to how much of the money you want to retain when it's uh, again sold or reused. Um, so it's just adding another layer to that cryptocurrency, to that futuristic kind of idea of how money can and should um, be implemented into kind of daily life and things like that. So smart contracts, very, very important, especially when, because all of these things are important when you're trying to get into NFTs, um, because if you don't really understand one or two of these, um, I don't think you, you'll get the most value out of the NFT or the coin itself, especially when you're going into investing, because it, it takes real money to get into this stuff. It takes actual dollars. Um, and, you know, these are people's hard to earn money, hard earned dollars. So we just want an educated decision when using these NFTs. You want to be as educated as possible, um, because at the end of the day, there is an investment. Um, there is a risk involved. And I think actually we should put before the video, Kenny, um, that we are not um, financial advisors we're not advisors of any type you do not have <laughs> no. to take this advice um we would just i'm here. down 20 percent in the market right <laughs> <laughs> these are for purely educational purposes um yeah so yeah we'll stick that at the beginning <laughs> because don't take anything uh that we're saying as gospel this is purely for education trying to give you um, a better grasp of nfts but yes you yeah. do, it and i would go money. And I would go further and say, like, don't enter this space if you simply want to make money. Enter the space if you want to be a part of it, if you're curious, if you're um, if you believe in it, because all money is a faith based system. So it has to have that level of uh, Trust. belief and yeah. passion behind it. So it's, I bet you could make some money if you wanted to, but you're going to be frustrated Entering, especially with how volatile these markets are. It's very, uh, it can be very painful to be a part of these markets. So just like Andre said, be caution, be educated. Don't fall for BitConnect <laughs> or any other. <laughs> the schemes, yeah, there's schemes. Don't fall for the scheme, there are schemes. So, there are schemes uh, popping up and they are real schemes. So yeah. I mean, like even I said, in this NFT space on the Ethereum blockchain, there can be, you know, verified transactions on the blockchain that are schemes, you know, so just be careful uh, when entering this, this space, for real. Definitely, man, definitely. Let's go ahead and kind of transition into the importance of NFTs, um, just kind of the, to sum up the, the, the things that you need to know. NFTs, um, as you're probably familiar with, um, have been making kind of a splash in the mainstream media because artists themselves are putting their art out as NFTs and they're selling for millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's like 69 million, like crazy, crazy money, real actual dollars. Um, and so I think this is just a huge opportunity for artists like myself personally, I make beats. I've been making, been making beats for a while. Um, and all of, my, all of my beats I'm now putting up as NFTs um, just because I, I know the upside is ridiculous and, um, like I said, so it's really early now in the world of NFTs. This is just the first five, 10 years of this. This is like, these things are going to be around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, so to be able to get your art minted into an NFT now, um, it, it's been very much so part of kind of writing history. So just to, just to something to think about, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, imagine uh, the early Picassos and the, who did the Mona Lisa? This is exactly what that is. It's like there's probably so much art back then. It's kind of hard to that probably slipped through the cracks that, that we may have never seen. Slipping through the cracks that may have seen. Some people, I think Van Gogh is one of them that was discovered after his death. Right. Um, so that's kind of the space we're getting in, except for it's a it's a lot of people uploading their art at this moment right now. And the real market, because this concept is so portable with products like 
uh, the PS5 or really anything that's yeah, going to have a limited supply. And really the, the benefit of that is having verified transactions so it can minimize theft and it can also uh, have a product realize its true value, you know. Yeah, if legitimizing. Using, yeah. Well, yeah, because it's decentralized so the market truly sets the value rather than Sony does, you know. I mean, Sony will set the initial sell, but when you start reselling the, you know, the PS5s as an example, um, it's much more likely for that PS5 to reach a true value, whether it's less or more than the um, than what it sold for at first. So be on the lookout. I, I think we're going to be verifying everything on the NFT right. blockchain. Again. I really, but yeah, I would definitely say the things that are more unique are going to have the more unique value and more intrinsic, uh, explosive value, the more unique that they are. And that's part of what we're trying to do is find the people who are going to be unique um, and help them enter this space so that, uh, you know, they can seize an opportunity and, you know, maybe make a name for themselves in history. Bro, imagine babies being born as NFTs. With the fucking QR code on them? Bro. Because, no I mean, bro. I, it's, it's, it's so similar to our social security numbering system yeah. to me that I'm like, it really does, like, it we're more, joking and it about it. It makes more sense. But too. it makes more sense because we do, we try to keep track of people like that anyway. In everything, we do it with our, uh, and that's another power of this, that all this is connected through your wallet. So I want to need a yeah. social security number and a driver's wallet. license number. All of that would be connected with my uh, wallet ID. Scan, scan that wallet. Right, and so. that's, you, you see this happening on um, online these marketplaces that are buying and selling NFTs are connected through on the blockchain. They're all built on the, on the Ethereum blockchain. And so that in essence, they're all uh, connected. Really any, any kind of creative work that you're doing, you should really start considering how um, NFTs could be incorporated just because like I said, it's coming you're, you could, you're, you're going to feel some resistance, but, at the end of the day, it's going to be forced upon us whether we like it or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the real idea is that once you own it as an NFT or otherwise, you own it. So you can, like, if you own the Mona Lisa, you, if you own it and that's yours, you could paint over it, you know? Right. And um, it's the same way with NFTs. You can replace it. You can add to it. You can add something in the contract, maybe some unlockable content. And you also have cool this, part, yeah, you part. have this like full ownership over what you bought. All right, just to sum everything up, uh, there's several terms we talked about today. Um, a blockchain, a system of blocks, we talked about fungibility, NFTs, Bitcoin, Ethereum, smart contracts, some of their applications here. You've heard of a couple of our personal opinions um, about it. Uh, I think. Like I said, this is a really this is a really huge part of our future, um, and I think that we're, these are going to be started are going to start being implemented um, in our lives. Like I said, whether we like them or not, especially when the bigger and bigger companies start um, taking advantage of them. Um, so, me and Kenny, we're like at, before these huge companies hop in, we're going to get in on it ourselves, time to start talking about it. Just want to join the conversation. Um, so we'll close out. We can check out our uh, NFT collection on OpenSea. Uh, we'll leave the link in the bio. Um, and then you can also follow us at Incline NFT um, to keep up with our drops and leave some questions there um, about anything you might want to hear on the next video. You probably come up on our videos. We're just starting off. Um, and next time, um, our next episode, we're going to talk about gas prices uh, for NFTs, for minting NFTs. So tune in there. Um, you'll be able to follow and stuff, like the video, if you like the video, if you got any value. Um, but if not, peace out. We'll see you next time. Again, my name's Andre. And Kenny, thank you all. Peace and client NFT podcast.